Hello everyone. I would like to present a case series on spectrum of magnetic resonance imaging finding in spinal tuberculosis, that is, what spine. I, myself, Dr. Kanish Kashinath Ravan Kulkar, JR2, radio diagnosis at Dr. Vasantra Power Medical College, Hospital and Research Center, Nasik. I have done this case series under the guidance of Dr. Nilesh Choudhury, Head of the Department, Department of Radio Diagnosis, Dr. Vasantra Power Medical College, Hospital and Research Center, Nasik. Spinal tuberculosis or port spine is the commonest extrapulmonary manifestation of tuberculosis. It spread through hematogenous root. Clinically, the symptoms are back pain, tenderness, paraplegia or paraparesis, kyphotic or scoliotic deformity. Infection with HIV increases the risk of reactivation of dormant tuberculosis and the risk of acquiring primary infection. In those co infected, a high frequency of extrapulmonary disease has been observed. The paradiscal, central, anterior ligamentous, and neural arc are the common vertebral lesion. Thoracic vertebrae are commonly affected, followed by lumbar and cervical vertebrae. Plain radiographs are usually initial investigation in spinal TB, but the main disadvantage is that more than 50% of bone has to be destroyed before a lesion can be seen on plain radiograph. MRI or magnetic resonance imaging is the best modality for quad spine as it moves. Magnetic resonance imaging frequently demonstrates disc collapse, cold abscess, vertebral waging, marrow edema, and spinal deformities. <laughs> the study was conducted in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, Dr. Vasantra Power Medical College, Hospital and Research Center. The study period was one year from June 2021 to June 2022. Uh, in study, total 40 patients were included, all patients having clinical radiological feature of spinal tuberculosis and those referred from other clinical departments were included in this study. MRI examination was conducted using 1.5 days la Siemens MRI in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, Dr. Vasantra Power Medical College. The sequences were taken in axial, sagittal, coronal plane, which include T1 weighted, T2 weighted, STIR, and T1 weighted contrast segments. Image obtained were studied and characterized. The various findings are as follows bone marrow edema, spondylodiscitis, end plate erosion, paravertebral involvement, epidural component, reduction in intervertebral disc space, kyphotic or scoliotic deformity, reduction in intervertebral body height, and subligamentous spread. I would like to show some images suggestive of various regions involved in quad spine. This is an image of 36 year, 36 year female presented with chronic back pain, mild fever, and weight loss. On MRI, we can see there is altered signal intensity at contiguous end plate of L3 and L4 vertebral bodies, mostly at paradiscal margin, with reduced intervening L2, L3 vertebral disc height. So in next image, we can see there is a 50-year male presented with neck pain and back pain. On MRI, we can see there is altered marrow signal, T1 hypointense, stir hyperintense with moderate contrast enhancement noted in C5 and C6 vertebral bodies with adjacent paradiscal erosion and involvement of intervening C5 or C6Ds, mild abnormal enhancement noted in posterior interspinous region at C5 or 6 level. Here are few other images of the participants included in the study involving different regions in port spine. On calculating the result, we found that out of 40 patients diagnosed with spinal tuberculosis, 27 patients were male while 13 were females. The age range of patients was from 11 to 70 years and the mean age was found to be 30. The most common clinical features were observed are 
back pain, low grade fever, and loss of appetite. The least common features are kyphosis, paraparesis, and scoliosis. The most common site of involvement was found to be dorsolumbar spine, then followed by dorsal vertebrae, and then lumbar vertebrae. The MRI finding were showed severe vertebral body destruction was noted in as high as 30 patients with wedge collapse seen in 20 and compressor fracture in 10 patients. The bone marrow edema and inflate irregularities were found in almost all patients while disc height reduction was found in 20 patients and degree of spinal canal compression seen in 10 patients. As we know, the treatment of spinal tuberculosis remains a challenge worldwide. Uh, left untreated, this destructive disease has disastrous consequences with progressive deformity and eventual paralysis. Early diagnosis and prompt initiation of anti-tuberculous medication remains the key to successful treatment of spinal tuberculosis. Imaging plays an important role in diagnosis of spinal tuberculosis. Plain radiography remains the first line management However, relying solely on plain film radiography to establish the diagnosis has its dangers. The major disorder based on MRI Sorry, the major advantage of MRI are the earlier detection of spinal tuberculosis as suggested by an increased intensity of bone marrow and allowing for overview of whole vertebral column to diagnose non contiguous lesion. I would like to conclude by saying MR imaging is sensitive for detecting vertebral osteomyelitis and is therefore the imaging technique of choice in spinal infection. In spinal tuberculosis, the superior contrast resolution of MR imaging is useful for showing contiguous vertebral involvement, skip lesion, and paraspinal collection. MR imaging provides critical information about the spinal cord and extent of epidural pus in patients presenting with neurologic deficits. Familiarity with spectrum of MR finding in tuberculous spondylitis, especially in high-risk patient population, can prevent a delay in diagnosis and may limit the management can caused by this aggressive but curable infectious disease. The following references were taken for my study. Thank you.